This is a quick video over the fouling factor and what exactly is the fouling factor? Well, fouling factor, or just fouling in general, is just the buildup or the accumulation of stuff on a pipe or on a surface or anything. And it can be calcium buildup or it can be corrosion. It's just a, uh, just something what happens over time, what naturally happens over time, and it can be from water or oil. But usually oil will be much, will have a much higher fouling factor than water, maybe about nine times higher. But it's just the accumulation of stuff on the surface of the pipe. And it's pretty much a resistance. So the fouling factor is usually written as RF. And for the most part, it has units of approximately, depending on what the fluids are flowing and what the pipe is made out of. But it has it has units of about 0 0.0001 to 0 0.001 and that is meter squared meter squared degrees Celsius per watt and that's a resistance so how can we actually calculate the fouling factor well we actually do it by a combination of everything we find the total resistance RT of heat transfer through the pipe. So if we know the amount of heat that's being lost or absorbed by the cold water from the hot, and we assume that the system is is adiabatic, that no heat is being lost, so it's well insulated, then we would say that RT is equal to is equal to the fouling factor on the inside of the pipe divided by the area on the inside of the pipe, or the surface area on the inside, plus R, the fouling factor for the outside, times the surface area on the outside of the pipe. And we're talking about this being the inside, this pipe, of the inside of the pipe, and this being the outside of the pipe. Because that's where all the heat transfer is occurring. No heat is going into the insulation. We're assuming that the, it's a perfect insulation and, and nothing is getting out. So then we add the heat convection or the heat resistance due to the either a lack of convection, which is just one over the convective heat transfer unit on the outside or inside. Plus, so we have to do it for the outside too, one over the heat convective force on the or convective unit times the outside. Plus the conductance or resistance due to the pipe which is equal to the natural log times the diameter on the outside times divided by the diameter on the inside. So the natural log of that all divided by 2 pi k or the uh, conductive heat transfer unit times the length of the pipe where this is the length. And we can actually calculate this unit, this, or we can calculate this, this, and this. We can find H with the uh, with the Nuxel number, and we can we know the Nuxel number because we know the the Reynolds number of the fluid. If we know the velocity of the fluid and the diameter of the pipe and what f the fluid is, we can find the Reynolds number, and we can also look up the Prandtl number, and that will give us the Nuxel number. And again, we know the outside diameter, the inside diameter. We also know what K is for the pipe, and we also know the length of the pipe. So the only thing we don't know is or the only thing we don't know are what these values are. So we actually combine this to R F T over just the surface area. And usually it's an average between the two. And we just call that the total fouling factor for the for our case a double pipe heat exchanger. And and R is actually equal to one over U times A, where U is U is equal to the overall overall heat transfer transfer unit. So it's the total amount of of so it's it's just a combination of H uh H not just it's the it's all of these added together. When you have one over UA it's the combination of all everything. So it's the total heat transfer unit. It's, it's the same idea of H and K. 
So it's, it's the exact same idea. And we calculate that by, if we know the total heat transfer, and then, so if we know the total, or the total amount of heat transferred across the system, which is Q, then it is equal to the, the overall heat transfer unit times the area, times the temperature between the hot fluid and the cold fluid. So if we can actually calculate Q, where Q is equal to the mass flow rate of the cold fluid, maybe, times the heat capacity of the cold fluid, times the temperature difference of the cold fluid, Tc. So then we can get Q. So if we have Q, and we know what Th and Tc are, we can get 1 over Ua is equal to Th minus Tc all over Q. So then we have what 1 over Ua is, so if we know what this is now, then we we'll just do a little bit of rearrangement and we can find what these are. And you can't find what these separate are, you can only find what their total, you can only really find what this is. I guess the only thing I would add is usually this, usually this becomes Q is equal to UA delta T log mean, log mean temperature difference. It's usually what you, instead of using TH minus TC, you use the log mean temperature difference. And that will actually give you a better, a better UA. Or just a better U because you know what, you know what this A is.